Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we are doing what do they think you're thinking? I thought this topic would be so interesting and we've never done a reading on this perspective before. And I thought it could be really helpful for a lot of you to, you know, maybe you're in a situation in which you want to know what the other person is thinking and maybe you want to help bring your negotiation to balance or maybe you just want to help the situation out and you want to see the different perspective on what this person is thinking you're thinking <laughs> so let's find out together to do this reading we are going to be picking three piles together i see one we're going to be picking major arcana cards so that's the second one oh and this is the third one right so let's find out what your piles are for today's reading for pile number one you have chariot for pile number two you have lovers And for pile number three, you have Wheel of Fortune. If you like to pick with crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, you have the Blue Appetite Crystal. For pile number two, you have the goldstone crystal. And for pile number three, you have the turquoise crystal. All right, so take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to, and that will probably be the pile for you here today. Another way you can use this reading, you can allocate a different person to a different pile, and you can also use different piles for the same person. It all depends on how you want to do this reading and go about it, or what you're drawn to uh, for the same person. As I always say, there aren't too little or too many piles. Whatever you're drawn to, these will be your piles. And as usual, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. Hey, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful blue appetite crystal as well as the chariot card. And today we're taking a look at what do they think you're thinking. Can't wait to get into this reading, very excited about it. Uh, but before we begin, let's pull out, oh, looks like you've got two cards here. Uh, a card from each of these oracle decks like i mentioned in the introduction of this video i felt like this is an important video to help give you a perspective on what the other person is thinking so this way you can you know bring both your ideas together uh, and improve the connection between you two if you're negotiating this way you can have a win-win situation 
So yeah, I felt it was an important perspective to do a reading on. Let's find out what your Oracle cards are first. So you have the Acolyte, new projects, learning, You have the weaver, rediscovering, sorry, rediscovery, transition. Ah, you have the heart chakra with growth. And you have mature woman. Wow. Growth and mature woman. This is amazing. Okay, so let's now pick up a couple of cards from the middle. And then we'll take from the top. You have the nine of wands. The ace of swords. The Three of Pentacles, the High Priestess, interesting. And it, it's interesting <laughs> because this Three of Pentacles now is giving me a different perspective with the High Priestess, so let's keep them together. You have the Knight of Swords, a lot of swords here, and look at the hand gesture, my, <laughs> okay. You have the Death card. Wow, now I'm seeing different perspectives of you and at least how they're thinking about you. Uh, you have the Page of Swords. Look at that. What's going on here? <laughs> okay. Whoa. And you have the Queen of Wands. I mean, you are seen as a very powerful person. No question. I, 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 look, I'm seeing so many things here. Let's get straight into it. So, of course, the first thing we can clearly see, woman here is energy. I mean, it's not gender, but it does give me a perspective. The, the woman gives me a female energy. So back to what I wanted to say, is that you come across to this person as someone who is mature, and bold, right? So that's the impression. And so from that perspective, let's think what you're thinking. Because for some reason, I really felt the combo here and the Queen of Wands in specific kind of like gave me a perspective of their perception of you. So, whoa. I just got a message. Could they be thinking that you want to communicate with them because you have the chariot? Or that you have the intention to? In all cases, they, they find it very hard to read your energy because look at that. You have the high priestess, which is all about secrecy. So they don't know a lot about what you're thinking. They can't figure things out easily. Do you see the Three of Pentacles, with, which is a card of collaboration and cooperation. <laughs> you see this figure uh, putting some colored glass. It's almost like they're covering. No one can see inside. So it looks pretty, but no one can see. I think this is giving me the vibe of you being professional, polite, and it's not so easy to drag information out of you because you always have a beautiful response or a brilliant response. So politically correct, I would say, in terms of keeping people away from getting to know your thoughts because, you know, the Ace of Swords has to do with clarity. So you, do, you see, <laughs> do you see that? The Nine of Wands, it's like... Your, your thoughts are gated. It's not so easy to read you. Um, and they feel like you don't give them enough information. 
And so this whole top row, asking the question and the intention of the reading, why do they think, what do they think? You're thinking, first thing is it's so hard to read you. <laughs> do you see that? From their perspective, they can't get enough clarity to find out what you're thinking about. But here is the thing that they're picking up. The energy they're picking up is that something was working and then all of a sudden it stopped. They have no idea why. And then they feel like it's working again. <laughs> so I don't know how this fits into your reading, but that's why now I understand you have the chariot. To them, from their point of view, depending on what this is, like if you're trying to make a deal with this person, like then in this case, this would be you were up for it for a while and then you cut them off. You're like, you st they started feeling you're not interested. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, this person is interested. Or even the same thing if it's a romantic connection, whatever type of relationship this is, something was working from their point of view. They, this is perhaps why they're confused. Uh, and they felt really shocked that something ended abruptly because it was working, it was fine. And perhaps why you have the Queen of Wands uh, uh, from another perspective is that they're so excited that it's now working. So I think they're thinking with the Acolyte, which is someone who learns from an adept, a new student. I think from their point of view here, you're studying the situation. You're considering it, you are taking your time to put, see with the weaver, to put things together before you give them a yellow light or a green light, before you okay something or before you do something, or maybe just like in the beginning of the reading, you would message or contact them or accept their communication. So. To them, they're thinking you're considering this, you're putting things together because you seem to be someone with an open eye. It's not so easy to fool you. To them, you come across as a very strong character, not easy to read and is fully capable of protecting their thoughts. But they also feel like you have a big heart and that you are a balanced person. Yeah, they feel you have a big heart and quite a mature, obviously, person who's going to think about things wisely. But once you make a decision, it's going to be that with you. If it's positive, it's going to be very positive. <laughs> and if it's negative or if it's a no, it's a definite no. They're thinking you are, I don't want to say fighting them, maybe challenging them mentally. Yeah, challenging them. Discussions where, with you aren't easy. So they're thinking, you're thinking a lot about this. And you're going to come up with something smart. <laughs> and with the scarecrow holding the sword, from their point of view, they're like, uh-oh, if this person comes up with something smart, because they think with the sword that I'll, I'm scary, uh, with the scarecrow and the sword that I'm scary, and that I'll be able to respond back, this is a problem because I'm pretending to be scary and up to their level because you come across as quite smart. So they are quite afraid that you'd cut their thoughts out. See, Knight of Swords is someone who goes after, um, you know, courageously after the ideas that they believe in. They speak courageously and sometimes they can be cutthroat. They, nothing can stand in their way when they're defending something that they believe in and nothing can stand in their way when they want to say something 
or say their thoughts, they hold on to their thoughts with passion. It's almost sometimes to an extent where they're blinded by only one perspective. So with that thought, since they come across as strong this way, they're presented here by the scarecrow and see the knight of swords here usually presented as someone who's strong and you know with a with a horse that is running quickly and you almost feel like this person's going to cut anyone off right in front of them here we're seeing they're afraid of being cut and they feel weak and almost not just challenged but almost defeated so they're thinking They've probably said a lot of things and they've come across as strong and you're preparing back <laughs> to hit back when in reality that was just a show. They're not as strong as they appear to be. And they feel, on the other hand, that you're mature, more balanced, and so strength is genuine from your side and that you will be able to come back with something smarter I don't know why you have uh, <laughs> this energy, but uh, these are the thoughts obviously coming from the other person. And so look at that. They are scared this time because they believe you are masterfully putting things together. And as you put things together, you'll be discovering, rediscovering things, learning about what intentions they've coulda, they could have had, they feel like you're going to discover some things as you think deeply about things. And with your wisdom and your intelligence might be able to hit them back. Nonetheless, which is <laughs> weird energy. Why am I saying weird? Because nonetheless, it looks like they're thinking that you, as well as that, have an open heart and you are considering making things grow. In fact, doesn't this look like a hospital um, room, right? So maybe they feel like things you're thinking that maybe you can heal things despite the tough conversation, maybe? In all cases with the Aqualite, it could be that they're thinking they never know because you are very secretive. Are you going to come off uh, as scary and fight back? Or are you going to have an open heart? Because you're also, you also come across uh, not just as a strong person, but quite mature and balanced with a big heart. And would you follow that energy and continue your connection or your collaboration with this person? It all depends from their point of view on how you are going to think about this and what you're going to be putting this together, what you're going to be discovering and yeah, what you're going to be studying, but they're afraid of some of you discovering something by the way, because look here, you have a closed eye and then here you have an open eye. So it gives me this idea that you're afraid you would discover something. See, this vessel reminds me of your mind since that's the head and looks like honey. It's like you're super smart <laughs> and they're afraid of your intelligence and of you taking this time uh, thinking. It's that energy of Oof, what is this person going to come up with? What are they going to think? But at the end of the day, they're very hopeful with the chariot that you are in fact going to move with your connection between the two of you, that it's going to work out. 
They're very hopeful, I believe, with all of these birds nested in this person's hair. And you know, a bird's nesting next to your home is seen um, in many ancient civilizations as a good omen because, you know, the birds would pick a safe place to build their nests. So they're really betting on your heart and they're betting on your goodness and they're betting on your maturity. But at the same time, with this amount of secrecy, they know that you're a very strong person and it, when you end things, ooh, <laughs> yeah, there's no way back. <laughs> Nobody's getting in. I wonder what this is all about. But you come across to this person as super intelligent and that you're going to... Why do we keep seeing... I, I want to help you out with this. Why do we keep seeing you discovering things when you put things together? Now, I think you're probably wondering at this point. I'm... So for pile number one, please. I felt this card, so I'm going to take it. And it's interesting, this card, because when I was shuffling, I saw it and my hand still moved and I still saw it peeking out. So I'm happy it's meant to come out. Something significant about this card. Let's keep it here. One, two, three, four, and five. So what are they worried about you discovering? <laughs> Pile number one. are they worried about you discovering ace of cups oh actually for a lot of you this is not a bad thing for some of you with the ace of cups you discover discovering um so if this is a business deal how much they want this business deal if this is a romantic connection then how much they love you. Uh, if this is a friendship, then how much they care, even if they are portraying themselves as scary. Something like they're worried about you noticing a vibe here or there. And I say vibe, it's because the Ace of Cups. I think they're worried about you at least knowing whatever this is that they care about something. It could be about you or about something. So we have five cards here. You have, whoa, the five of cups. Ooh, this could be you discovering that they would be disappointed without something. You discovering that it's, see, here you're providing them with something so positive that they love. It could be you personally, or it could be something you're providing. So this person you are inquiring about today is worried. You know, you take something away from them. Look at the cup right there. That would be so disappointing to lose. So that is what they're worried about you discovering. Let's continue. At least that's what the cards are showing. The emperor. Look at the emperor feels helpless. <laughs> Right? What an emperor. Usually their their backs are straight, they're strong, they have a strong look. This looks like an emperor who's afraid of something, right? Doesn't know what to do. Do they have their hands on their cheek? Yeah. This is an emperor that doesn't know what to do. Page of Cups. And, whoa, guys, I mean, for a lot of you, uh, if this is romantic, then this person is worried you'd find out about their true feelings. If it's not romantic, then you discovering what they care about. You finding out exactly what they care about. Whoa, the sun card. Look, with the sun card, this is you discovering what they care about. This is, uh, you're holding something that is very important to this person. That, remember when we said so much positivity. Uh, 
you're holding something that could like this is a bit dramatic but for a lot of you it will be that that is like almost life and death to them sun is life look at that it's raining when the sunshine oh you probably heard that song too right uh I just heard it and it passed. I know you heard it too. It's sunshine. There's no sunshine when she's gone. Right? So you're depriving them of something important. Yeah. So obviously if this is a romantic reading for you, then we know what this is about. But if this is like a business deal then your product, your service, your end of the deal is very important to this person. That's what they, they're worried because in that case, maybe you will increase your price or maybe you will demand for more or maybe you'll, you won't be afraid to walk away, perhaps. Um, I am confident you will be using uh, the information here, which is the intention I've done for this reading, uh, uh, the right way I know and look at that you have mature woman I know uh, you have the maturity to handle this information perhaps why the universe is granting it so to me this answers the question completely uh, they feel like their power is and stability with the emperor as well is taken they feel like you're providing them because water is essential to life you're providing them sun, water. You're providing them with endless supply of something essential to them. So that answers the question here of what are they afraid of you realizing? So maybe they're afraid you realizing they're, they're not as strong as they want to appear, perhaps, because that's coming here. Uh, as well because of what they need at least at the end of the day in your reading although we got so much information about their perspective and what they think you're thinking at the end of the day they feel like they can't they maybe they could have gotten even more thoughts but they feel like you're very secretive and a lot of these thoughts are speculations on what you could be thinking. But there's big energy of hope and, uh, yeah, of movement. They are betting on your maturity and they are betting that you are going to have a big heart and continue this. My dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book. It was done from the heart to help you guys become productive, a productive person and follow your dreams every single day of your life. It's small, straight to the point. You're not going to procrastinate reading it, but really you'll find all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away. Uh, as soon as you finish this ebook, all while enjoying the journey. This is the true highlight of this ebook of you not just being a productive person, but to truly enjoy it, enjoy it every single day. And if you would like to check it out, you'll find the link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also an audio book if you love listening to your books. And my dear pile number one, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful gold stone as well as the lover's card. And today we're taking a look at what do they think you're thinking. So to do this reading, today I'm going to be using this tarot deck as well as these three oracle cards on the table. If you're wondering, hey, what's the name of these oracle decks that you're using? Uh, you always ask me this question I and I always leave them down in the description box for you guys uh, to check them out whenever you feel called to in any reading. Okay, so let's get straight into it. We need one more card. I see, ah, two cards. So 
What did you get, my dear pile number two? Right, so you have the pilgrim, opportunities and growth. Hmm. Looks like a lantern, a hand holding a lantern and it has a rose as well. All right, let's keep it here for now. You have, why is it there? Uh, you have the crown chakra with creation. The root chakra with acceptance. Hmm. Main female. Hmm. Ah, no. What? <laughs> you have the lovers again? Wow. Okay. All right. Let's now pick up your tarot deck. Let's split the deck and take it from the top. Oh, this one, these two. One, two, three. Right. Now we take it from the top. <laughs> So you have the seven of wands. So this uh, deck, just so you know, right off the bat, uh, has a dark side, well, a shadow side is the right way. It has a shadow side and it has a light side. So this is the seven of wands uh, in the light and in the shadow. You have the page of pentacles, again, in the light, in the shadow. You have the Ten of Wands, Shadow, Light. Okay, you have the Seven of Wands, Light, Shadow. You have the Knight of Pentacles, you get it by now. The Ace of Swords, the King of Pentacles, Light, Shadow. And the Five of Swords, Light, Shadow. So with all of these shadows, and you have the Lantern here, the first thing I'm noticing, all of these cards, most of them coming up, except for two cards in the Shadow, it gives me the impression, just like I got with pile number one, if you want to check pile number one, because they had a strong notation of uh, you not being able to read your mind exactly. You know, everything's kept in the shadow. They can't exactly make out what you're thinking. And you can even see here a lot of smoke. It's like they can't read you, uh, <laughs> or at least they can't read most of the thoughts that you have. All right, you can even see like ghostly figures, smoke, shadow, all of them giving me curtains around the window, it, it, especially with the main female. Female, of course, like I said in pile number one, that's why I think you should check pile number one, again, if you're drawn to it, of course. Uh, females, just energy. And with main female, I think uh, here is saying, that uh, you are someone who values themselves with the main female standing there. You're someone who values themselves a lot. And perhaps it is why you're not uh, revealing everything. Now, lovers and lovers, if this is uh, someone you're inquiring about, in a romantic perspective, this makes a lot of sense. I think this person thinks you really like them or that you have some emotions for them. If this is not from the perspective of romance, then it's the same thing. I think that this person believes you're thinking that there is something that you love about 
your collaboration together, you, they think you find that both of you work in harmony or collaborate in harmony. And I think here lovers and lovers kind of gives me the feeling, honestly, that there is mutual reciprocity. I think it's, it's just an intuitive feeling that I have, a strong intuitive feeling that there is um, a good connection between you two or a good harmony, uh, good feelings between the two of you. But it does look to me, especially with this page of pentacles, hiding the pentacle in the book, that you're not someone who easily uh, lets out what they're thinking. You're not letting everything out, especially that the Ace of Swords here is in reverse, you know, very, very hard to read, lack of clarity. Yeah, and this lack of clarity is really hurting this person or in making them uncomfortable one way or the other, hurting them or making them uncomfortable. So in this card, this root chakra, I remember I've read in the guidebook about this figure here that's called Cherry. And I remember Cherry was saying to her friend that my life feels like this pie. It's really good and delicious, but something is missing. Something important is missing. And so her friend told her, maybe it's supposed to be like that. Uh, the, oh, I forgot to tell you the perspective. Cherry has a boyfriend and her boyfriend, I mean, he treats her pretty well. Everything is okay, but she has this strong inkling that he's not uh, honest with her, that he's not cheating. Something is missing in the connection between the two of them. And so this person said, you know, perhaps it's meant to be like that because with the missing piece, this pie looks like a heart. And so Cherry really found this to be very wise. She meditated on that and she realized coming as a conclusion that from this conversation that maybe it's, it was the right thing because she's not in the right relationship. So she left her boyfriend and then she found the right person. So I think this person is thinking that you value yourself so much and whatever type of connection that is going on between you two, this person believes that there's so much shadow here and that you're keeping so many things to yourself because something important is missing or at least you're worried that something is missing or maybe with a lantern, you've discovered that something important is missing. So they're thinking you're not being available or you're keeping things close, your cards close to your chest because with the root chakra, something is important to you, something that is important to your stability, to important to your happiness, important to, important to you, is not there. And so for that reason, although there is a lot of warm emotions between the two of you, a lot of amicability and nice, beautiful emotions, and maybe even you value each other very much, there is something that's important that's missing. And do you know with the crown chakra, you come across to this person as smart, enlightened. Mm. And you're going to create your world in the way which you believe you deserve it. Or you're going to create this deal in the way you believe you deserve it. I highly recommend you check pile number one. I mean, I'm, I promised last time I'm going to say it. But yeah, I highly do recommend it. It's a lot of energy, very close from totally different cards and decks. So 
The seven of swords in reverse shows me that this person is thinking that you are thinking that it's not easy for you to be tricked at all. It's not easy for someone to lie to you, to trick you. I feel like these swords have been, are underwater and although they're rusting, they're still standing in place, you know, and they're properly chained and it's gonna be very hard to take them out. So although rusting, they're in place. So I, this gives me this impression that this person thinks you're not gonna budge. You're not moving ever, even if it means you're losing other things or losing a, a, an important connection or losing a big deal. You're not moving. And with the Ten of Wands, you're willing to throw everything away, including this person. And that you will continue to keep your cards close to your chest. And you will continue to be secretive to a point where it hurts your connection because you're not going to get tricked out of something that's important for you. See, Page of Pentacles is supposed to represent a new page, a new chapter, and that chapter is closed. You're not willing to open it, and you're not willing to consider it. So this person is thinking that something is making you uncomfortable because the Seven of Wands is a card of being challenged, but in its light, this is someone who is standing on a high plateau and despite the challenges, they are able to overcome them. But here, we see someone who's truly challenged and the ones are overcoming them. And so this person is thinking that from your point of view, this is a, the reason you're standing your ground so much is because this is not a small issue to you that you can solve. This is an issue that you believe will greatly harm you or will, yeah, will, will uh, shake your stability. Because here we said higher plateau. And in that case, right next to the root chakra, in reverse, this means it's shaking your stability. And now for you, it has become a case where you're choosing between two things that you dislike. So five of swords, you know, is a card of either winning or being defeated. And so this deal or this connection or this situation in the way it's presented now, from their point of view, they're, think you're, they're thinking, you see it as a loss anyway. So it's better to pick the better loss than lose, than, than be absolutely lose the whole thing. If I haven't explained this properly, let me give you an example of what I mean. So let's say you're a salesperson and you are trying to sell your product, your company's product to a company or to a person. This person showed interest and started asking you questions and you feel like, hey, this is wonderful. Looks like I'm going to make a sale. And then this person asks you to do something that is illegal or something that is against the company policy. And then you start realizing that this sale is not going in the direction that you thought. And so in that case, you, you've realized that the sale that you wanted is not going through. And if you have to choose between you making, you not making the sale 
and you making the sale, but doing something that could lead to you losing the job in the first place, in that case, these two have are lost cases. And so the better option would be in the two defeated options would be to not make the sale, but at least you've got your job, you can, you know, uh, seek another sale rather than make that sale and lose the job completely. And what would that sale mean, mean in that case? So that's the type of energy I'm seeing here in the Five of Swords. This person is thinking from your perspective, you feel like it's a lost case. Something is missing that is vital to you, important to you, important to, you, to your grounding, your position. It's not there. So they're starting to think that you must be thinking that, well, it's better to let it go than to lose something dearer and more important. And that's why you have the King of Pentacles upright. My goodness, these are the two only cards upright. King of Pentacles is a king, is a king of stability. It's is a king that knows how to do what they need to do. And you are coming across to this person as very balanced, a strong character, and someone who knows how to get what they need in their lives. Your stability, your look at all the red, your, your value towards yourself and what you believe you deserve tops everything else. Very high self-value. And so you were you are able to weigh the difference between getting a small win versus getting a big win. And to you, from their point of view, this is a very small win in comparison to what you believe you're worth, what you believe you deserve to get. In all cases, the lack of clarity and the thoughts that they have uh, about what you must be thinking at the moment is quite painful to them. It is, a, it is quite a painful thought. And they believe that things are maybe going in the opposite direction. that you are taking things so slow. Knight of Pentacles is slow energy, but you're here taking things so slow, considering now that you're viewing things from the shadow side or the negative aspect. And so it's almost giving me the impression that it's slow and going in the other direction. Having said all of that, they're also super hopeful with the pilgrim here, with opportunities and growth. Having said all of that, obviously they have a lot of hope because the connection between the two of you is a strong one. There's a lot of amicability between the two of you. There's a lot of sweetness, it seems, between the two of you. And so this person doesn't know with how you view yourself and how important that situation is and how much you're not gonna budge and how you seem to be the person who's gonna just throw it and throw the person away on one hand and on the other hand, how much there is sweetness and dearness between the two of you, having seen both of these things, this person is hoping that your heart won't let them go so easily, that you maybe won't be so harsh, perhaps, 
because whatever you have between the two of you is dear. So in that case, the shadow means can't see clearly and doesn't know with the smoke, yeah, doesn't know what you're gonna do next. But hoping communication between the two of you, see the two cards are pointing at both of you, open communication, yeah, that's the last thing I'm gonna tell you here. This person is hoping that open communication between you two, that's where the hope is going. So this person realizes and is hoping that open communication between the two of you can bring you both together because, or you bring you to agreement together because there's a lot of dearness between, or a, a great amicability or great love between the two of you. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see that the person thinks you're thinking about. I truly hope you've enjoyed this reading and if you have, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I post ev nearly every day and please don't forget to check out my productivity book. It, it was done from the heart to help you guys become a productive person every single day of your life to achieve your dreams and your goals. Uh, you'll find this ebook to be small, straight to the point. You're not gonna procrastinate reading it, but really you'll find all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away. And the most important thing, all while enjoying the journey. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to it down in the description box. There's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my beautiful pile number two, I'll catch you in the next reading. And a hello from my cat as well. <laughs> Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful turquoise crystal as well as the wheel of fortune. And today we're taking a look at what do they think you're thinking? Can't wait to get into this reading. I felt like it was going to be a really unique reading. We always do the other perspective and I thought it's pretty useful for a lot of people out there who want to see what the other person is thinking that you're thinking because this way maybe you would find out how you can create a win-win situation perhaps or make your connection closer or yeah however this is really going to benefit you so there we go i have put set the intention that this reading is done so that you can use this information in the best way possible for you and the other person okay so let's get straight into it you have the priest perseverance faith wow <laughs> okay you have with the root chakra discovery. I'm very tempted to read what this story behind this card says in the guidebook. We'll do that later. And you have balance. You know what I got from this combination? I have a strong feeling because this is the root chakra. This is like the earthly realm, the material world. And the priest here, you can see with faith, like this person feels like you have great psychic abilities. I didn't want, I didn't intend to start the reading straight, straight away, but I'm seeing something so strong here. This person is feeling like you have such strong psychic abilities that helps you discover things that <laughs> maybe they're not telling you or that you're the type of person who would say, hey, did you do that, you know, and say that? And they would be stunned. They're have, they'll have their hair at the back of their neck standing, thinking, how did you find out? <laughs> so I get that vibe, first and foremost, that you, like, um, find sight, you're psychic, you're, you have strong intuition, high intuitive intelligence mm, that makes you find things out. 
Okay, so other than what I've just noticed here, we'll wait until we see the rest of the reading. You have the third eye, see? Third eye being able to see things that others aren't seeing. So you have balance with the third eye chakra, right? like you're able to see things in the right balanced perspective correctly. You know, you're not overestimating anything, you're not underestimating any, anything. And this makes it hard for with the balance here and the people not being too happy. It makes it hard for the people who don't have the best of intentions to play you because you say things in such a balanced way, you're not afraid perhaps to say the things that um, you're not you're not afraid to apologize, you're not afraid to admit is the word I'm looking for when things haven't really gone right from your side, but at the same time, you're very clear about the things that you did not like. Uh, so yeah, not an easy character here at all. All right, so we are already getting glimpses of their ideas about you. Let's continue the reading in the perspective of what they think you're thinking, now that we know this information. So you have the courthouse. What Are you a lawyer? <laughs> The balance in the courthouse, perhaps. Or maybe this person is thinking you're consulting your lawyer. That could be something for some of you. Okay, let's now split your tarot deck and take it from the top. So you have the Knight of Pentacles. The Empress. Oh, okay, this one first. What's this? The Page of Wands. The Five of Swords. The Ten of Cups. And I see two splits in this deck. I see this one. Okay, we're getting two. And I see that one so let's see what we have you have the four of pentacles for a lot of you this is a reading about i know it's not gonna resonate with everyone but you could be in a, in court with this person it could be or maybe you're in battle with this person somehow. For a lot of you, you have the Nine of Cups. And you have the Nine of Swords. Whoa. So. <laughs> what are we seeing here? Well, let's start with the card that wanted to come out here. We're seeing the Page of Wands, and within the Page of Wands, we're seeing the figure from the Sun card. So I'm seeing that this person is thinking that you're thinking that you're in a good position, in a positive position, in a strong, positive position, hopeful, very hopeful about something. I'm really not feeling that the energy between you two is all that good, at least from your side. I could be wrong. This is at the very beginning of the reading. But in all cases, this person is thinking that you feel you're in a good place, you're in a positive space, and you are protecting that. Also, with the death card sitting on the empress, the empress is a nurturing, loving energy, right? For sure. But there's the death figure sitting in place of the empress, which means that this person is thinking that you're thinking that something died, nurture died, love died. Maybe this person is thinking you're... You don't really care anymore. Hmm. And that you've turned 
your disappointment into you feeling like you're winning. Why am I saying that? Because this is the five of swords, right? Five of swords is either being defeated or winning. Now, this is the figure from the five of cups, though. The five of cups is a card of feeling disappointed. So it makes me feel that this person is thinking that you are thinking that you're that you've turned your disappointment into you winning and you're in a positive place now. Mm. And because you're in this beautiful place, you're guarding that. See, this is the nine of swords. It looks like they are in the scene of the nine of wands. Nine of wands is standing there protecting, guarding, not letting anyone in. So now you're not letting anyone in because you're protecting your mental space. What are you protecting it from? See, that's the figure from the nine of cups. Or we're gonna, so this figure is supposed to be here in the nine of cups. Nine of cups is wish fulfillment. You're in a happy place now. Perhaps you, you've gone a long way to doing something that you care about. And you're protecting that headspace from the nine of swords, from feeling anxious, from going back to that bad place that once was. Mm. I, I really feel in this reading, especially with the river having a lot of blood, so that perhaps there was a lot of war. If this is not a court case, then maybe in this pile, you are things may not be going too well between the two of you at the moment. And you've gone through a lot with this person. And so you've worked a lot and healed a lot. And now you're in a good place. And this person is seeing that you're, you're in a good place now. You're not as caring and nurturing anymore. And you're thinking that you're going to guard this new energy, this new positive, beautiful, new chapter energy that you've gotten. Uh, like your life depends on it. And with the Nine of Cups being drunk, it gives me this idea that this person is thinking that you're thinking that you're in a happy place. And in fact, you seem to be overly happy, you know, overly good. On a not so positive note, this person could be thinking that you may be lying to yourself about how happy you are. But really, it doesn't look this way to me, honestly, because you have the Ten of Cups here. You look like you are in a happy place. We, we, we see the Sun card. The Sun is also healing. And it's positive. You're in a good place and you're protecting it. And that's what's going on. But they're thinking, you're thinking, you know, you're happy and that you are pushing it or maybe trying to convince yourself that you're happy. It seems you won something with this battle or head-to-headness with this person. And maybe they're, this is why they feel that you're so psychic when they're thinking about you. They're thinking that you are able to see through them. And that you have a lot of wisdom and you are able to see past a lot of things. And they know that you're a balanced person. But maybe this is then their ego trying to make them think that you must be delusional into feeling happy. Maybe they're bitter about your happiness, perhaps, after all these wars. And they feel like you've won so much. And they're thinking that you are not just happy, elated that you've won these many things. It's like, you know, this Four of Pentacles reminds me of maybe they won the battle, but you won the war. And of course, with the Four of Pentacles, 
they're thinking that you want to keep to yourself. You're so happy now and you want to keep to yourself. And that takes me to your wheel of fortune. Oh, yeah, this card's moving. Let me take it. I'll get to that in a second. So, the Wheel of Fortune tells me that this person is feeling like that's perhaps what's going on here. That this person is feeling like you've, you're becoming fortunate in life, like you've changed your destiny. That's the Wheel of Fortune. The, the wheels of fate have turned to your favor. And you're flying off free. And that your whole life has changed. And so you're feeling very, ah, that's probably why the exaggeration here. That's probably why they're feeling like you seem to be so happy. There's a bitter thought of, ah, oh, they're just pretending to be happy. Mm. But seeing the Hierophant sitting in place of the King of Swords, I mean, both of them have to do with the mind. Why? Because the Hierophant is a teacher. The Hierophant is someone who's known to be knowledgeable. Same with the King of Swords. And I'm getting this feeling that they're thinking that you think of yourself highly and you respect yourself a lot. You you see yourself as see i noticed something hierophant and the priest that you see yourself as that's the second time you see yourself as highly psychic you see yourself as very balanced and you see yourself as very smart also uh, the sign of the hierophant reminds me of the ancient egyptian jed which means the backbone. So you have your um, back standing straight. You're proud, you're in a good place and proud is not egoistical, it's very spiritual. Yeah, proud, you have a lot of faith, you persevere. Mm. And you're very grounded now, for sure. So they are aware of how you see yourself. And they're thinking that you're thinking that you're very powerful now. You see yourself as very powerful and nothing can stand in your way. Uh, maybe nothing, they, they can't maybe harm you or maybe speak to you the way they used to or continue in court the way they used to. I see that they feel like you are winning. Hmm. At least that's how this person is thinking about it. It's like some sort of war, win and lose. And I'm hearing in my mind, bitter, bitter. I think they're feeling bitter. Hmm keep hearing bitter they don't like what's going on but they are pretty shocked by how you're able to see two things here now i understand psychic abilities yes they're pretty shocked by your psychic abilities number two they find you to be wise and you know what to do you know what course of action to take. You know how to behave. Oh, I remember now what I wanted to say. Um, they, are, they are surprised by your intelligence and how you can, with balance, say the right things. It's not easy to make arguments with you. They're stunned, bound, struck bound, sorry, struck bound, by the things that you say, the wise things that you say, like uh, they're, they're constantly, if, you, if this is about you arguing together or discussing things together, 
They're constantly surprised by the intelligent things that you say, the perspective that you come from. They keep getting surprised by how you see things. Maybe they challenge you, they gaslight you or whatever, and they find a more calmer, balanced response coming from a higher place, like higher mental space that they are not expecting. And so they're thinking that you are thinking that you've got this because it doesn't require you a lot of mental effort to take your rights and to respond and take, yeah, take your rights. And so they're thinking, you're thinking you're intelligent. Not to mention knowledgeable, smart, educated. And look, um, as I was talking here, my neighbor knocked and was asking to, with help for something. And so this really takes me to this part here that we haven't yet explored. This tells me that they're thinking, that you're thinking that you are moving things faster where you otherwise were thinking to take it slower because you have the knight of pentacles is slow energy and then you have the charity um, in place of the knight and the chariot is quick moving so it gives me this idea that they feel your thinking that you are moving things quicker whereas you possibly before had moved in this area slower. This is making them think then possibly you are actually coming from a happy place and not as they think that you're pretending maybe or you're faking it or maybe exaggerating it. And so there is a dike caught to me in their thoughts about what you're thinking. Perhaps sometimes they feel that you're overdoing it so that they can feel better. And at other times they watch the way you act and think. Uh, they act and from there they start understanding the way you think about it, that you're actually thinking and intending to move quicker in some areas where you were pulling back. And this translates to them as you being in a very happy place after all these wars and bloods. You must be in a really good place to be able to do that. And so overall, they can really see that fate is on your side, that you're lucky and that you know that you're lucky. And like I, uh, what was the word that I channeled? Bitter, I think, yeah bitter i think they are feeling a little bit bitter my dear pile number three this is exactly what i see in your reading of what do they think you're thinking i truly hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that i upload and please don't forget to check out my productivity book it was done with so much love and full intention of helping you become a productive person right away as soon as you finish reading this ebook. It's small, straight to the point, and so it's done this way so that you don't procrastinate reading it in the first place, but really, you'll find a lot of aha moments, some key advice and secrets that will truly help you become a productive person right away as soon as you finish this ebook. And the whole idea is that to do it all while enjoying the process. That was the whole focus of this ebook. I truly hope you enjoy it, you enjoy it as uh, so many others have enjoyed it all over, uh, uh, over the years. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to it down in the description box. There's also an audiobook, by the way, if you love listening to your books. And my dear pal number three, thank you so much for everything, for tuning in, for your support. And I'm wishing you the best from my heart. May you always be blessed and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.